Right then guys, she'll turn, but she won't fire. So let's go through some logical fault finding procedure. And in today's video, hopefully, we can get her running for the first time in many years. Let's go and take a look. Now then, a little bit of background on this one. It's had a new battery. The fuel level was low, but it's got some fresh, good quality fuel in it. Now, if you turn the car over, as you saw earlier, it won't fire. But if you had a little bit of easy start, the car will run. So that tells me we've got spark, but we've got no fuel. So let's go into some fault finding procedure to see why we haven't got that fuel that we need. The first logical place to start is the battery. Now I know we've got a new battery, but we'll test it anyway. 12.46 volts. So that means she's good. Now the next step is to see if we've got power at the fuel pump. Now the Mark 1 MR2 gives power to the fuel pump during cranking. I've removed the center console for access and this is the connector and these blue covered cables go all the way down to the in-tank fuel pump which unfortunately is underneath here. Pull this one apart. This is the connector that comes from the main loom down to the fuel pump. So, if we connect up to it, and we don't have it. So now, we need to look at where that power comes from. The diagnostics box is located on the rear firewall in the engine compartment. And if we bridge out terminals FP and B+, with a link of wire, like so, and then turn the ignition on, we should have power at our fuel pump connection. Now all we're doing is we're bypassing everything previous to the diagnostics box and then we're taking a switch live from the diagnostics box to the cable that goes to the fuel pump connector. 12.26 volts. So we've proved that we've got the ability to get power from the diagnostics box down to here. The next place we need to look is the circuit open relay, which is inside the boot. The circuit open relay lives in the boot, just down here, on a bracket that goes onto the ECU. But we need to remove it to take some resistance reading off of it and then to test it. To do that, you'll need to remove one, two, three bolts, and it's got a tricky little clip in behind it, which I've already removed. This one just here. And then you can pull the electrical connector off and then we can take it off the job and then we can test it. Now then, three simple resistance readings we can take to prove whether this circuit open relay is good or no good. The first is between STA and E1 terminals. We need 17 to 25 ohms, which we have. The second test is between the B and FC terminals 88 to 132 ohms, which we've got. And the third test is B to FP terminal, open circuit or infinity, which we've got. So resistances wise, our circuit open relay checks out. The next thing we need to do is fit it back to the car and do some electrical testing on it. The next thing we're going to do is fit the relay back onto the loom, but we're not going to put it on the bracket so we can hinge it down and get access to the pins. And what we're going to do, ignition on with the engine cranking, and we're going to see if we've got power at the FP terminal, because power comes from circuit open relay through via diagnostics box and on to the fuel pump. So let's do that now. And before you test the circuit open relay, make sure you remove the link that you put into the diagnostics box before. I've tested the circuit open relay and it checks out. We've now got full voltage to the fuel pump during cranking, which is power that we didn't have before. 
So whether the relay was sticking and us pulling it off and putting it back on and tapping it around and testing it has kicked it back into life, I wouldn't like to say. But we do now have the power that we need during cranking to the pump. Which puts me in a bit of a sticky situation really. And that sticky situation is that now I need to remove the fuel tank again. Now for those of you who weren't aware, six months ago I helped the previous owner of this car drop the fuel tank and fit a new fuel pump. And at that point I made two mistakes. The first was that I didn't bench test the new pump. I didn't check it off the job to check that it was pumping and not leaking and working. The second is that I didn't look inside of the fuel tank to see what condition it was in. So all I'm going to say guys is learn from my mistakes so that you don't have to go through what I'm about to go through for a second time. But because of the wonders of editing, the next scene you'll see will be the fuel tank removed from the car, sat alongside it on the floor, ready for some further testing. Right then, fuel tank removed, and trust me, that's not a job that you want to do more than once. I've just extended the cables that come from the fuel pump to two terminals that I'm going to tap onto the battery. I've checked the resistance and there is a resistance in the cables. So I would say we've got no open circuit and power should get down to the pump. Now then, well on there, nothing at all. Which tells me that our new pump is at fault. Further inspection has shown not good signs unfortunately. This is the new pump. And as you can see, it's covered in rust and it's horrible. And inside the tank, but it's very, very rusty in there. Not a good sign. Hmm. So there we have it. I now need a new fuel pump and a new fuel tank. But you can save an old fuel tank. If you've got a rusty old tank, you can get slosh tank solution that you can put inside of the tank to save it and seal it. It's very effective, but it's not the cheapest. And for the price that you can get a good second-hand fuel tank for is how much the Sloss Tank solution is. And because these tanks aren't massively rare and they are available, that's the route I'm gonna be going down. And regarding the six month old pump, yeah, it's day two now and I've cleaned the connectors and the pumps had a chance to dry out and settle. And now when I put a bit of power to it, It appears to have sprung back into life, but one thing, plus, minus, plus, black, minus, red. Really? So in between the parts arriving and being ordered, I need to fill my time wisely. And when I was underneath the car, I had a little poke around on the floor pans on what looked like a little bit of surface rust, as it always does, and before you know it, I could feel some carpet. So I think the next thing you're going to see from us is going to be interior removed, cutting holes in the floor and welding in new patches. Lucky me. Now guys, if you enjoyed today's video and you found it helpful or informative, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more from the build, don't forget to subscribe. Have a wonderful couple of days and we'll see you very soon. Take care. Let's see if we can get this metamorphosis. Hello, 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 hello